Hello and welcome to Science Era. In this video, we're going to discuss amino acids. What are amino acids? Amino acids constitute a group of neutral products clearly distinguished from other natural compounds chemically, mainly because of their emphalytic properties and biochemically, mainly because of their role as protein constituents. An amino acid is a carboxylic acid containing an aliphatic primary amino acid group in the alpha position to the carboxyl, carboxyl group and with a characteristic stereochemistry. Proteins are biosynthesized from 20 amino acids in a system involving strict genetic control. Thus, amino acids are basic unit of proteins. More than 300 amino acids are found in nature, but only 20 amino acids are standard and present in protein because they are coded by genes. Other amino acids are modified amino acids and co are called non-protein amino acids. Some are residue modified after a protein has been synthesized by post-transitional modification. Others are the amino acids present in living organism but not as the constituents of protein. Let's move on to the properties of amino acid. There are physical properties as well as the chemical properties. So first physical property is amino acids are colorless crystalline solid. All amino acids have a high melting point greater than 2000, uh, 200 degrees. Solubility, they are soluble in water, slightly soluble in alcohol and dissolve with difficulty in methanol, ethanol and propanol. Our group of amino acids and pH of the solvent play important role in the solubility. On heating to high temperature, they decompose. All amino acids are optically active except glycine. Peptide bond formation. Amino acids can connect with a peptide bond involving their amino and carboxylate group. A, co a covalent bond formed between alpha amino group of the one amino acid and an alpha carboxylic group from the other forming uh, carbon oxygen and nitrogen hydrogen linkage. Peptide bonds are planar and partially ionic. So these are the physical properties of amino acids. Let's look at the chemical properties of amino acids. First one is Zwitter ionic property. A Zwitter ionic is a molecule with functional group of it, uh, which at least one has a positive and one has a negative electric charge. The net charge of the entire molecule is zero. Amino acids are the best known example of Zwitter ions. They contain an amine group, basic, which is basic, and a carboxylic group, which is acidic, and the NH2 group is the stronger base, and so it picks up hydrogen from uh, COOH group to leave a Zwitter ion. The neutral Zwitter ion is usual form of amino acid that exists in the solution. Amphoteric uh, property of amino acids. Amino acids are amphoteric in nature. That is, they act as both acid and base due to the two amine and carboxylic group present. Ninhydrin test when 1 ml of ninhydrin solution is added to a 1 ml protein solution and it is heated. The formation of a violet color indicates that the presence of alpha amino acid. Next is xanthoprotic test. The xanthoprotic test is performed for the detection of aromatic amino acid such as tyrosine tryptophan and phenylalanine in a protein solution. The nitration of benzoid radicals present in amino acid chain occur due to the reaction with nitric acid giving the solution yellow coloration. Reaction with a Sanger's reagent. Sanger's reagent, uh, which is 1-fluoro-2,4-dinitrobenzene, react with a free amino acid uh, amino group in the peptide chain in a mild alkaline medium under the cold condition.
Reaction with nitrous acid. Nitrous acid react with amino group to liberate nitrogen and form the corresponding hydroxyl group. So these are the chemical properties of amino acid. Let's move on to the structure of amino acid. All 20 of the common amino acids are alpha amino acids. They contain carboxyl group, an amino group and a side chain R group all attached to the alpha carbon. So here on the screen you can see carboxylic group, C double O is carboxyl group, NH3 is the amino group which carries positive charge and carboxyl group carries negative charge. This H is hydrogen and R represent a R group is the variant in different side, uh, side chain of the amino acid. So this remains the same in all amino acid and this is the um, side chain which changes. Exception to the structures of amino acid are glycine which does not have a side chain. Its alpha carbon contain two hydrogen. Proline in which the nitrogen is part of a ring. Thus each amino acid has an amine group at one end and an acid group at the other. And a distinct with side chain. The backbone is same for all amino acids while the side chain differs from one amino acid to the next. All the 20 amino acids except glycine are of the L configuration as for all, um, all but one amino acid, the alpha carbon is an asymmetric carbon because glycine does not contain an asymmetric carbon atom. It is not optically active and thus it is neither D or nor L amino acid. Classification of amino acid based on R group. R group is the side chain. So they are non-polar side chains, electrically charged side chain, which are further divided into two groups, acid and basic amino acid. Then we have polar side chain. Let's look at each of these in detail. First one is non-polar, also known as aliphatic amino acid. The R group in this class of amino acids are non-polar and hydrophobic, which means they are hydro mean water and phobic mean um, uh, they fear water. Glycine, allylene, valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, and proline are all the non-polar or aliphatic amino acids. Then we have aromatic amino acid, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan with their aromatic side chain are relatively non-polar, hydrophobic again, all can participate in hydrophobic interaction. Polar or uncharged amino acid, the R group of these amino acids are more soluble in water or more hydrophilic which means water loving than those of the non-polar amino acid because they contain functional group that form hydrogen bonds with water. This cl class of amino acid includes serine, threonine, cysteine, asparagine and glutamine. Then we have acidic amino acid. Amino acid in which R group is acidic or negatively charged is the acidic amino acid. So there are two acidic amino acids glutamic acid and aspartic acid. In the last we have basic amino acid. Amino acid in which R group is basic or positively charged is the basic amino acid. So these are lysine, arginine and histidine. All together they make up 20 amino acids. Classification of amino acids based on the nutrition. There are essential amino acids and there are non-essential amino acids. Let's look at each of them. So, there are nine essential amino acids. Amino acids cannot be synthesized in the body and therefore must be present in the diet for protein synthesis to occur. So, these are known as the essential amino acid. These are nine which include histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, 
phenyl alanine threonine tryptophan and valine then we have non essential amino acids there are 11 non essential amino acid these amino acid can be synthesized in the body itself and hence do not necessarily need to be acquired through diet these non essential amino acids are arginine glutamine tyrosine cysteine glycine proline serine ornithine alanine asparagine and aspartate so these are this is the classification um, based on the nutrition classification of amino acids based on the metabolic fate so it can be divided into three groups glucogenic amino acids glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids and ketogenic amino acids there are two types of ketogenic amino acids which is leucine and lysine and uh, glucogenic and ketogenic uh, category include tyrosine isoleucine phenylalanine tryptophan all other amino acids are the part of glucogenic amino acid group let's look at each of these so, glucogenic amino acids, these amino acids serve as a precursor of gluconeogenesis for glucose formation. Glycine, alanine, serine, aspartic acid, asparagine, glutamic acid, glutamine, proline, valine, methionine, cysteine, histidine and arginine are all the parts of glucogenic amino acids. Then we have ketogenic amino acids. These amino acids break down to form ketone bodies like leucine and lysine are the two amino acids which break down to form ketone bodies. Other glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids, these amino acids break down to form precursor for those ketone bodies and glucose, isoleucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine are the both uh, glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid which act as a precursor for both ketone bodies and glucose body then we have the functions of amino acids the first is in particular 20 very important amino acids are crucial for life as they contain peptides and proteins and are known as to be the building blocks of all living things the linear sequence of amino acid residues in a polypeptide chain determines the three-dimensional configuration of a protein and the structure of a protein determines its function. Amino acids are imperative for sustaining the health of human body. They largely promote the production of hormones, structure of muscles, human nervous systems, healthy functioning, health of vital organs and normal cellular structure. The amino acids are used by various tissues to synthesize protein and to be to produce the nitrogen containing compounds like purines, heme, cretin and epinephrine or they are oxidized to produce energy. The breakdown of both dietary and tissue protein yields nitrogen containing substrate and carbon skeleton. The nitrogen containing substrate are used in biosynthesis of protein, pyrimidines, neurotransmitters, hormones, porphyrins and non-essentials amino acids. The carbon skeletons are used as a fuel source in citric acid cycle used for gluconeogenesis or used in a fatty acid synthesis. So this was all about the amino acids. We looked at their structure, classification, what are amino acids and all the types of amino acids. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.